Now, now let's start with verse 15. If your brother sins against you, go tell him in private. For both what Jesus had just said and what the rest of the verses will say, this trespass, and the word is harmatia, it means just to miss the mark, it is, is more than just a word that hurts or something that rubs you the wrong way. Each one of these uh, trespasses, if you will, are, are sins that are repeated, that are settled, that are continuous, that are unwilling oftentimes to be repented of, that are blind spots or just defiant areas. And the issue is, you know, here is a sheep of God who has brought himself or allowed himself to come to a place where he's no longer living or walking with God as part of the, of the sheepfold, but he is in defiance and you have become aware of the sin. You know, you have to now bring the diligent love and concern of the Father, verse 12 and verse 14, to the forefront. So be like your Lord, go get them back, do it yourself, do it privately, and if it works, it'll bind you together like nothing else can, right? Verse 15, you have won a brother. Your love, your devotion, your, your commitment will solidify your relationship with someone in the body that you may not otherwise have been so close to, but you're willing to risk all for the sake of retrieving them. Now notice that according to verse 15, you are being sent by God. And I want you to watch carefully here these verses. Because in ultimate, ultimately, God has allowed you to become aware of their struggle. Not everyone knows everyone in the church. People will come to me and go, oh, you know, I just found out so-and-so is in this kind of sin. Well, I didn't know. And you shouldn't be telling me. But regardless, God brought it to your attention. If your brother sins against you, you realize that his life is not in order. And God wants you to now deal with it. Because you're made aware of it, you're now going to be the restorer or the vessel through whom God is going to seek to restore. And it's one of these solemn trusts that God gives to his people for the sake of loving the sheep. Now, it doesn't say in verse 15, if you see your brother in sin, broadcast it, report it, blog about it, fill out a prayer slip in regards to it with his first and last name. Call your friends to share with them how you just need prayer for a brother. Let's just call his name what it really is. Try to spiritualize it. It's not a rebuke ministry. It's a call of God for you to reach out as the shepherd in verse 12, 13, and 14 reflects the heart and the will of God and the value of God upon the sheep that's wayward. If you catch your brother in sin... Go tell him his fault between you and him alone. And notice the words against you. And by the way, they're, they're literally translated towards you or among you or literally in your sight. So the issue isn't some personal violation of your, of your walk, but it is, you know, an invasion of your territory. You know, God has brought it, if you will, to your attention. You've become aware of this. But now you know the heart of God and being his servant, the question becomes, well, what do I do? Well, know this, God's love for them is such that if you offend them, you better go swimming with those cement floaty things, right? That God has a heart for them, that verse 11 tells us Jesus died for them, that he seeks to restore them. So, now you're God's representative, and God didn't show everyone else, he showed you. And now it's your job, if you want to be great in the kingdom, to go retrieve them. Paul, years later, in, in the book of Galatians, will write in chapter 6, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in a fault, then you who are spiritual should seek to restore them in a spirit of meekness, all the while considering yourself, lest you also become tempted. Same counsel. You know, Paul was only repeating that which Jesus had already taught. 